Yeah, uh, I think I have a problem. So, I've had a Nintendo Switch for coming up on six years now, and throughout that time, I've acquired a lot of, um, accessories. I mean, as you can see just from here, these are all, like, officially licensed third-party controllers from companies like, you know, Power A with, uh, these, uh, three, uh, PDP with, like, these ones. Uh, most of these are actually, uh, PDP. I prefer them for third-party controllers over Power A, like, the PDP ones are just way better. That's a whole other video. But just the fact that the Nintendo Switch is such a versatile system, it's both a home console and a handheld, and tech, like also a, a tabletop one as well. That means that's three different uh, categories of accessories that can be made for the system. Controllers uh, like these pro controller styled ones are really only usable in tabletop or docked mode, but if you wanted to take the system on the go, I mean, you have cases, and cases, and a lunchbox, and a Power A controller that I forgot about, whoops, and a burrito case, and more cases, and even more cases, <laughs> and yet another controller that I forgot about. Like, yes, this, this is not what the typical person should get. Realistically, you are fine with just a second pair of Joy-Con, a Pro Controller, a basic travel case, a screen protector, and a micro SD card. That's really the, all the necessities that an average person would need. <laughs> but it, it is kind of fun to just waltz up into a retail store like Walmart or Target or Best Buy or whatever, or GameStop, and just pick up one of these uh, as like an impulse purchase because the, uh, the wired ones are no more than like 30 bucks, so it doesn't feel all that much like an actual financial investment. But then, you know, you pull them out of storage and you realize, oh, this is a lot of money that I spent just on controllers. I mean, that's not even to mention the amount of Joy-Con and Pro controllers that I have. You really don't need more than even four pairs of Joy-Con, to be honest. But once you have those five basics, what I mentioned earlier, it does start to get tempting to keep buying more like specialty accessories as time goes on, because now that you have the basics covered, you want to start having accessories that are applicable for more specific scenarios. And another case that I forgot about. Before we continue, I'm gonna clear all this off. <laughs> So, the PDP commuter case is, I think, a good example of a more specific uh, use case accessory. I think these days it's called something different, like the messenger case or whatever, because PDP went through and renamed all of their accessories <laughs> for whatever reason. Basically, inside of this case, you can store the Switch right here, along with two extra Joy-Con, and five games here, and a little... Uh, accessory pouch, and then here on this side you can store either a Joy-Con grip or a Pro Controller, and underneath that you can store nine additional games, and in here uh, they intend for you to put in your AC adapter, but I have a smaller battery bank that I fit in here before, and that, that works just fine, along with the, uh, the Genki Covert Dock, and then you have a little pouch here on the front for smaller things. This would be something that I would consider more of a special use case, because when are you going to need to carry all this stuff with you and not also an official dock? I suppose, yeah, if you're traveling to a friend or family member's place who you know, like, they have a switch and you can, like, put your system in their dock, but still... It feels a little bit too specific of a case, to the point where I really haven't used this as much as I thought I would've. But that's not to say that I haven't used this, like, I, I have used it a couple times, but not as much as I was anticipating I was going to. And if you are like me, and you go and watch videos of various Nintendo Switch accessories, it almost feels like with certain accessories, people tend to way overhype them, and they basically make those accessories out to be as though, like, this'll solve all your problems and do your dishes, and almost like it's the second coming of Christ. <laughs> 
when in reality, everyone is going to have their own specific accessory that they deem is the best accessory, whereas for someone else, it's going to completely miss the mark because that's not how they use the system and it doesn't match that other person's use case. Nudge, nudge, wink, wink. Now, yeah, buying additional controllers even could be considered justifiable just because of the whole, you know, stick drift issue that the Switch has. This pair down here of the Splatoon 2 themed Joy-Con that I have started uh, drifting on me last year, so I ended up sending them in and these these aren't like completely new Joy-Con. There's definitely little things about them that confirm that these are still the ones that I bought like <laughs> way back in 2018. The camera isn't gonna see this terribly well, but there's a weird faint like dashed line mark here of um some sort of weird not full-on scuff but just a weird like surface level abrasion that happened with this one but after i got them back like they've worked perfectly fine but even considering stick drift like th this just feels like a whole lot especially because i more so do online multiplayer with people instead of local these days just because of reasons so i don't even really need this many joy con but at this point i'm just gonna keep them just in case a lot of them start drifting <laughs> or whatever but even then i do want to get into maybe replacing the um the sticks of especially these red and blue ones because this red one is kind of worn a fair bit and so especially within this past year i have started to pull back on what exactly I'm buying for the Switch. Because even though last year I was confident that, oh, we're not getting a new system until 2024, maybe even 2025, and that first part, I was right. Because here in 2024, the newest system is the Switch OLED. Even then, like, it just doesn't make sense to really buy a whole lot more for a system that if we're being honest, is kind of on its way out. But like, why would you continue to buy more stuff for a system that realistically you're not gonna be using all that much longer? Especially if the next system is going to be backwards compatible with Switch games. So like, why wouldn't you just trade in or sell your current Switch to get the next system? And who knows what the compatibility of accessories is going to be. Hopefully these are all still compatible even just wirelessly. Like if the new system is essentially a Switch 2 and uses controllers that are basically just improved Joy-Con, maybe a bit bigger or whatever, even if there isn't uh, compatibility with old Joy-Con, just being able to still hold down the sync button to pair them to the new system to use them wirelessly for more basic multiplayer like Mario Kart, like that should still be a thing. But then things like cases can still be repurposed into some capacity. This Zelda case in particular is actually where I store my Elgato capture card if I need to put it away in storage for a while. And this top compartment is where I keep the cables. Or then you have the aforementioned uh, PDP lunchbox. The actual name for this is the pull and go case because this top part is where you can store the Switch itself with the Joy-Con and a couple games, but you can pull the top handle down and unzip this main compartment and you have pockets and wells for various things. This is intended to be used for like bringing the whole dock setup with you for traveling. So you'd put like the dock here, uh, whatever controller here and your cables here. But like this can still be used for uh, just like general purpose storage. Like in here, I have two of my wireless PDP controllers that um, I just keep in here along with a couple extra things like the, uh, the Genki Covert dock. So if you really wanted to, you could get like extra Velcro dividers because that's that's what these are attached with to basically make this into like whatever bag you want. So in that regard, this is still a case that you can use past the days of the Switch uh, still for other stuff. But then you have 
very tailor-made cases <laughs> that are basically only meant to hold a switch. Now yeah, this TomTot case does have storage for extra games, but still, like, what else are you going to fit in here after the days of the Switch if the next system is not going to fit in here, which I'm willing to bet it won't. With Switch controllers, you can just hook them up to your PC and use them as generic controllers. So even after the Switch is uh, dead and done, as long as you're you actually play games on PC, these can be used as backup controllers or controllers for local multiplayer games. This goes for both the Pro Controller along with uh, the Joy-Con, albeit the Joy-Con specifically can be a little bit weird to set up because technically they are two separate Bluetooth devices, so unless you get like a specific application on your computer or uh, I know iOS, you can sync up a set of Joy-Con and it'll just be recognized as one controller. But I have also gotten the third-party controller offerings for the Switch to also work on Steam. And yes, that's both the wireless and wired options that are out there. It's basically just been plug and play in, uh, in regards to Steam at least. So in that regard, I'm almost okay with the amount of controllers that I have because I know that in, in the future, they can just be used on PC. But there are definitely accessories out there that are tailor-made for the Switch and nothing else. Namely, the aforementioned Satisfy Grip and Fixture S1 and S2. So I know I did a video on the Fixture, the Satisfy, and the uh, Hori Split Pad Pro, but I guess I, I want to take this next little bit just as like a an update to that video of sorts. The fixture has actually become my go-to way to play the Switch handheld around the house. Like you set a pro controller in here and then you put the Switch here in this top mount and you can position the Switch independently from the controller that you're holding so it's honestly ends up being way more comfortable even though it is more weight that you're holding on to. Um, just the fact that you're holding the uh, Pro Controller helps to distribute that weight a lot better. This is, this is specifically the S2 that's made specifically for the Switch OLED, uh, because the OLED is just a hair longer. The original S1 had almost like pencer eraser style nubs here, but the this S2, as well as the updated version of the S1, now have these felt pads. These don't leave anywhere near as prevalent of a mark on the back of the Switch like what the original fixture did. I suppose I could, you know, actually assemble this. This updated design does uh, feel maybe just a touch more awkward when you're trying to get it on, but after that, this is genuine. Like, this is genuinely my preferred way of playing the Switch around the house. Just over this past weekend, I was starting fresh save files in both Pikmin 4 and Mario Wonder, and this sort of setup really is a lot more comfortable. Funny that I've gotten to this point in the video. Um, I've actually been using the fixture in tandem with the Genki Covert Dock, so then. I can still play the Switch docked, but when I don't want to, I can just immediately start playing it with the, the fixture and I don't have to do uh, any sort of fiddling, so my, my actual dock is just sitting back there. That being said, at this point, I would say don't buy it, because who knows what the next system is going to be, if this is even going to be like intercompatible with the new system so unless if you're okay with only using it for a year maybe just don't buy it i do think it is a way better product because of the, the little updates that they've done but still like at this point i would say don't buy it speaking of don't buy it <sighs> so this right here is the updated version of the Satisfy Grip, which is both 
intercompatible with the original Switch and Switch OLED, because like I said, the OLED is just a touch longer. But what that means for this sort of design is that when you're trying to put in a Switch OLED into here, you end up putting way too much force down than what I'm really comfortable with. I've had this for basically nine months at this point. I have used this twice. Once after I got it, and another time for a weekend trip that I took several months later. And that's it. Just the thought that this grip is putting that much force onto the Switch, especially the Joy-Con rails, I don't feel comfortable with that. And because you're putting just the standard, like, handheld mode switch in here, your hands have to be positioned in parallel with the screen, unlike the the fixture where your hands can be more in that traditional uh, controller grip. So then you can still adjust the uh, switch console to whatever viewing position that you need. But also there's another reason why I'm kind of bitter towards satisfy at this point. So. I don't have these on hand because I don't know where I put them, but this uh, Diablo red color of the grip came with a set of their rise pads, which are supposed to add even more like ergonomics to the switch in handheld mode. And I thought it would be a good idea to put them on the white Joy-Con that came with my OLED switch. So you may not even be able to tell like what exactly the pads have done. You know what? I'm going to pull out my phone and try to angle this. Yeah, yeah, you see that? Those marks on the Joy-Con? Also, yes, I'm shaking, I know. But trying to take them on and off is the reason why these Joy-Con that were otherwise still in, like, pristine condition uh, no, are no longer in pristine condition. I know a lot of people out there are gonna be like, oh, well, they still function, they're, like, they're still good. Yes, but still, these were not even, like, these were barely half a year old, but then they just kinda got, yeah, marked up, ooh. That's not even to mention that when I was taking them on and off, they were, like, slowly eating down the sides of the sticks. I mean, yes, other people have had it much worse, where it basically just destroys the sticks. <clears throat> it's safe to say that I am not going to be giving Satisfy any more of my money just because of that. And I don't even feel good about using this grip that is compatible with my system because it puts so much unnecessary strain on the Joy-Con rails. Like, I almost just want to get rid of all my Satisfy stuff. <laughs> but I guess that kind of goes into what my philosophy is going to be in this next console generation. And that is... Less is more. I'm gonna be very selective with what I get for basically any console from now on because yeah, it's nice having all these accessories, but just the thought that, you know, what is the general compatibility of things going to be going forward? Because uh, Nintendo can be kind of hit or miss with how compatible previous games and accessories can be with future systems. That kind of goes into like a weird side tangent that I could go on of, like at some point, I really do want to minimize all the extra stuff that I have just because a lot of this stuff I have just not gotten my money's worth out of. And part of that whole thing of minimizing what I have kind of goes into, um, I guess what is now my, my everyday carry bag. This is actually like a newer thing that I've gotten recently, uh, this TomTalk everyday carry bag. But my thought with getting this is that it can hold my wallet keys, phone, along with my Switch or whatever console I decide to take with me, as well as any, uh, like, extra things. In this, uh, right pocket, I have both in-ear monitors with a adapter for my phone and Bluetooth headphones. And then in this main compartment, this is actually big enough to fit the Steam Deck. TomTalk actually has a hard shell case that you can get for your Steam Deck. But of course, this middle well can also fit a switch. This is uh, TomTalk's slim 
hard shell case that I got specifically for this bag, but it's also just a nice minimal case for the Switch. And there's still plenty of room here that you could even fit like another separate like dedicated power adapter here even. I have this set up to where the official Anchor 13,400 milliamp hour battery bank, uh, two Joy-Con straps like tucked in there, the stock Joy-Con grip, the Hori um, play stand, and then this big mesh pocket down here is where I keep a couple cables to use with the battery bank. Sometimes I swap this out for the uh, U-Green power adapter that I have that can charge like three devices at once. It's really really good for travel. And then this back pocket for my phone. There's even like uh, loops on the side that you can put carabiner clips on here to carry things like water bottles or uh, shopping bags or whatever. And yep, there's another one on the other side. And then it would just, you know, zip up and you're good to go. You can put the strap around your shoulder and, and wear this as like a crossbody bag. So yeah, I can like carry a whole like switch and accessories and still my everyday carry items. And I haven't really put the Genki Covert dock in here just because I just want to keep it pretty like minimal and focused to handheld and maybe tabletop play like what I have in here. Like yeah, I mean I put the Joy-Con grip in there, but that's just to illustrate that yeah, you can fit something kind of that size in here. And that's not to say that I'll always have it in here. Like you can swap this out for whatever you want. That's the beauty of everyday carry bags is that they can really be tailor made to your life. But anyways, that's to say that I am gonna take a more focused approach uh, going forward with the stuff that I buy for systems. But yeah, I think that's about it for, for me for this topic. It's just something that I really started thinking about uh, a couple months ago that I just have way too many Switch accessories <laughs> to the point where I may actually start getting rid of them or like selling them off just to get them out of my life. <laughs> but yeah, I think that's about it for now. We'll see you later.